Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm recording this video today on Monday, April 26, 2021. So just today, Zoom launched a new immersive view, which I think is going to be pretty cool actually for classes or maybe even meetings. So the short of this is that immersive view allows you to take the video profiles of each of your participants and project those, as you can see on the screen here, in various settings. Uh, these settings include uh, mock classrooms, um, uh, fireplace, if you want to have a fireplace meeting. Here's another mock classroom where the instructor would be uh, here, and then anyone else who has this installed would appear here. So I think the idea here is it might break some of that monotony in terms of just allowing your Zoom participants to appear in this more immersive view. So let me describe how to set this up for your computer. So depending on whether you have the Mac client or the um, Windows client, you will need version 5.6.3. I just did the update today, and the easiest way to update is, you know, there's two versions of Zoom that typically exist on your computer. Different on a phone, and I won't uh, vouch that this will work on a phone. And if you're curious, if someone doesn't have the most current version installed and they don't have the default setting to allow immersive view, they will just see on their computer the normal gallery view. So it might be a little weird if some people have the immersive view and others don't. So it might be good if you want to use this to encourage everybody to update to their most current client 5.6.3 and then that way you can be sure that everyone is able to use it. So to get started on this, you could go to your app. One is the app that lives on your computer and this is like the native app. It's just like Microsoft Word. You open it up and this is really where you can go in and do your updates, your software updates. If you go to your uh, typical version of Zoom on zoom.us, this is what you see and this is where you do a lot of your settings and in fact in other trainings on Zoom I've always said that you have to work with both of these. You have to typically update through the native app that lives on the computer and then you have to customize settings and download recordings on the actual web app and I kind of wish they would combine those some way um, but it's just something you, ha you have to remember. So to download the latest version of Zoom I would go to my computer app, not the web app. And what I'm going to do is, I'm in the Zoom app open. In my left corner here, I don't have the screen share showing that. I will go to my Zoom app and I will click, it's on the About menu. It's the main menu for Zoom. And I'll click on Check for Updates. If I have a version that I need to download, it'll tell me. I would hit Install and it's a very quick process to do that. So I could hit done since I'm all set here. Now one thing you want to do, and you really don't have to change this because it's default, if you want to be sure, under your meeting tab, or click on settings, and then click on the meeting tab, which is default. Scroll all the way to the bottom, and right around where you see your images for your virtual background, you see this tab here, immersive view. Allow hosts to, to curate uh, case-specific scenes such as classroom or boardroom for their meetings or webinar. And as it says here, it's only available at version 5.6.3 or later. Okay, so as I said, you really won't have to change this. When I installed the new version of Zoom, this was default. If it's blue, you're fine. If it's gray, then that setting is off. So what I would do now is just launch a Zoom meeting. And this part will be very easy to do. Now, one of the things I'll point out here is that I am recording this meeting, but when this records, they don't yet have the functionality of recording these scenes. So even though you'll see these in real time with all your participants, again, each of these would be a participant, the recording will just have your typical views, however you decide to record things. If you have advanced recording setting set up, then that will record every single version, including the share screen with and without your video caption. Um, it will also include each of the um, participant views and um, the gallery view and so forth. So this is not yet enabled, um, but presumably Zoom will have a more advanced feature coming up where you could choose to record it in the new immersive view. So to get started with this, all I need to do is go to the top view panel, which is right there. And this is no different than before in the past. On the current version, I was just in a meeting today, you have your speaker view and you have your gallery view. And it's not changing here because there's only one participant here, myself, in this workshop, in this recording. So I just click on view and I'll click on immersive. 
Okay, and this is where it gets fun. And this is, I think, you know, not unlike what we did with um, those Snapchat filters. And if you're interested in the Snapchat filter, go back to my video because that is chosen here under the snap camera. And you have to have the snap camera um, open at the same time. And then you could do all those interesting Snapchat style filters. But we're not going to mess with that for now. So again, I click on view and I click on the third one down, which is immersive. And I can choose to put people uh, manually into view or automatically. I guess if your whole group is going to do it, if they all have 5.6.3 of zoom, then I would just leave it as automatic. And this is not unlike what you've experienced before for your virtual background or video filters. So just like that, you'll click on it and you'll enable that. So we can try the first one here. Currently they have eight, nine of these. So presumably they'll add more. So I'll just show you each of these. And it's not going to be as effective because it's just me. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice is there's always a little bit of adjustment you have to do with your filters. Um, I happen to have a camera where I can um, do some zooming and, and panning uh, with my remote. If you don't have a camera like that, then you just typically would have to move yourself so you get in into the frame. And that's pretty easy to do. And you could also instruct your participants to do that. So this, I think, is just maybe a little bit different. And maybe it's going to create a different kind of spatial relationship among the participants. Um, you currently cannot actually change. Uh, you'll notice that in a uh, gallery view with the new version of Zoom, you can actually move people around and you can customize exactly who's where. Um, that can be great for a seating chart if you want to do that in a class and so forth to take attendance. So this doesn't allow you to do that yet. Will it in the future? I'm not sure. So again, imagine if I have more people signed up, each of these would be a video avatar of one of our participants. So if I want to change the view, I'll go back to view, click change immersive view. This would be the classroom setting. And you can see this seats five, this seats 25, six, two, two, 25, two, and 24. Um, we'll have to see this next one is 25. The way Zoom has been working with gallery view is if you get 50, you could uh, scroll to the next screen. I don't know how that works because I have no way of prototyping uh, for 26 or more people, obviously. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is sometimes it doesn't get it exactly correct with the filtering. And um, if you have a green screen, most of us don't have a green screen behind us, but if you did, that would be a lot easier because it's taking a ton of um, computing power for Zoom in real time to figure out what is my body and what is just the background. So that's why you're getting a lot of that weird, not pixelation, but blurring, and sometimes it's getting it wrong. It has my my hand isn't correct sometimes. So that, that's just going to happen. Um, it actually did get my microphone here, which is kind of interesting. So it's almost detecting my microphone here as part of my body. So we can try another one of these. And again, experiment. I think what will probably happen is when you add people, they will just maybe randomly plop in. But it'd be interesting to see if you're always going to be in the center uh, if you're the host of the meeting. And that's something we'll just have to figure out when we try it live. Again, this would be for six people it looks like um, so it's not too bad it looks kind of like a you know a corporate boardroom or something like that so again it's just different kind of setting and it's not just doing the head it's also doing the the upper body and i'm assuming if you stand up it'll um yeah it'll i guess kind of adjust that but presumably most people would be seated and if you were in a standing desk i think it would still show that part of your torso and and your head so we can try just try all these to see what they're like. This is for two, a fireside chat. And oops, I have to hit start there. Okay, it looks like that. And this is a cafe. It seats two. Um, that one's a little bright for my liking in terms of the background. This is another classroom at 25. And I guess the difference here is you'll be seated here and your students would be in the, the other seats. So again, you, you could try this out and see if it increases the um, immersiveness since it's called immersive view. We'll, we'll see if it is more immersive. We can hit start on that and it looks like a kitchen. This is uh, learning pods, it seats 24. So I think they're gonna plop us in here. This is sort of like the design of the new uh, Seattle Amazon space maybe, or is it more like a um, by learning pods, they mean is it like a um, for younger kids, like K6 or something like that. Um, well, regardless, you know, you can decide whether to use it or not if it's appropriate. 
And then the last one is use my video as the immersive view, okay? Okay, so that one I think unfortunately we would have to try out with uh, more participants. It's not not showing up correctly. So I kind of like this one, the art gallery one my, myself. Again, it's I guess for just a small number of participants. But if you're interested in using this, I would say you know give it a shot. It'd be cool to try this in a meeting. Actually, tomorrow we have our teaching talk at noon. So if you want to log on tomorrow, let's uh, try this out. Anyone who wants to jump on, you could even leave. You don't have to stay for my uh, Canva training. But I would like to try it out just to see what it's like with. Um, more than one person to see what what the experience is like. And so again, just be sure to download at least version 5.6.3. For me today it was 5.6.4. So um, it looks like that is is uh, even uh, a later version. By the way, there's one new feature in one of the last updates that you might also find useful here, and that is a new pen vanishing pen tool. And you'll find that when you do an annotation. So if I share my screen here, I'll pick up the annotate tool at the top which is here you see all the tools available here and if you click on the spotlight icon you'll see vanishing pen so in the past you had an arrow and it would uh, stay there until you cleared it with your clear all so now the vanishing tool is kinda nice because it goes away so if you just use a, a typical drawing tool one of the challenges is you might want to emphasize something and say, say well look at this here and then you go on to your next point, you pull up another web page or drawing or whatever you want to do um, to illustrate. You then have to either hit the undo or the clear. Or you could go in and actually erase it, that last item. So this makes it a little easier. So click on Spotlight, click on Vanishing Pen, and you'll see it goes away after a few seconds. So I can do my emphasis like that, and then I want to go on to another point. It disappears. I don't have to click Clear undo or eraser. So I think that's actually kind of a nice tool. This is a new tool and again if it's useful for your class you can decide whether or not to use it. So that will be it for Immersive View. If you have any other questions uh, reach out. I'd be more than curious to hear about how this is working in your class or in your board meeting, in your other committee meeting. I think it could be kind of fun. We could try it out in a few meetings and see if it might be a little more um, exciting than the typical gallery or speaker view that we're accustomed to. So uh, thanks for listening. As always, I'll be back with more videos on Zoom and a variety of other topics.